Gary Busey. Uh, welcome. Get comfortable. We're going to be here for a oh, little no. bit. And uh, oh, no. yeah. you're the first one to uh, come to the studio. It's very <laughs> honorable to be here. I did this just for you. And uh, because, you know, you're a movie star and uh, we're going to- I'm not a movie star. What are you? I'm a kid from Texas. Yeah. I was born in Goose Creek, Texas, 11.15 a.m. June 29th, 1944. And my dad was in the South Pacific, World War II, as a CB, construction battalion, ah. where they built runways for the B-29ers. And there'd be two B-29ers land. And he saw one come in, and the nose art, which is the painting underneath the cockpit windows at the nose of the plane, Beautiful girl named Anola Gay, E N O L A G A Y, and they saw them load. He saw them load little fat boy on the plane. That was out of Bob going to Tokyo. Oof. Or they first bombed Hiroshima, and then the Japanese came to the State Department in America and said, "Please don't bomb Kyoto. That's our shrine of spirituality." So they bobbed Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And your father saw that bomb. Yeah. And they don't put the bomb together until the 37,000 feet automatic pilot, no turbulence at all. Then they fix the bomb for explosion before it's released. And when the B-29 comes over, here's Hiroshima right here. Mm -hmm. They Flip, they turn around and the cartridge, I mean, the uh, so the container that's holding the bomb has a, a powerful exploding energy that shoots the bomb out and they're going back and the bomb blows up a half mile above the land. And when it hits the land, it flattens everything at a 30 mile weighter, it's the 60 mile. Mm. Wow, that's upsetting. It's not upsetting. And extraordinary. War. Well, uh, you know what war stands for, what? WR? What? Weirdos and rejects. Hmm. Is that, are they weird and are they rejects because they can't find a way to talk to each other and have peace? Well, they don't know how to talk to each other. It's not that they can't find a way, they're not partaking the innocence of speaking the love they have in their heart for life. Mm -hmm. so i'm just curious you know i didn't mean to dive in so deep uh no pun intended so quickly into the podcast but we're deeply divot already yes deeply <laughs> there's, divot. there's no way around it your acronyms are incredible Buceisms. Buceisms, excuse me not acronyms um uh, that one in particular uh i, I first want to say that when i met you um we clearly had a connection Oh, the connection comes from past lifetimes we've been together. Ah. And we have been together before. Our spirits and our souls. Okay, I like that. I'm open to hearing more. It's just very familiar. Yes. Being with you. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. Like, I've known you a long time. We have. Yes. You have a very strong life force. And reading your story in your book, I am astonished at your drive, your your will to achieve what you want in life since you were a young boy, and the hardships. That I came without thinking, the achievements. And the hardship wasn't hard. It was part of my education in life. You hurt yourself playing football. Yeah. And then is that when you turned to acting? Uh, that's when I lost my football scholarship. And uh, so I wasn't playing football anymore, so I transferred my education to Oklahoma State University, which is about an hour from Tulsa. Tulsa, Oklahoma is where I grew up. And then you... And I did the audition and got a dramatic scholarship. Right. So things went very easy for you. What? Things were going easy for you. Things always go easy for me. So music, music... Music came easy to you, but it was almost like there was a divine plan for you working your way up to the Buddy Holly movie. 
you were already a passionate musician. That was angelic guidance. Mm -hmm. That movement. You, I had nothing to do with it, but just be there and do what I was given to do. And is that Yay. is that your philosophy now to show up, be present, and accept what comes? My philosophy is that I'm always there. I've already showed up. Okay. Sometimes you don't see me come in, but that's the beauty of a surprise. <laughs> that's true. So you talk about when you did the Buddy Holly story that you felt his spirit co-creating with you in the book. Yeah, the guys who made the movie, the Buddy Holly story, were from Philadelphia. And they'd never made a movie before. And they insisted I sing the songs live. And I realized two months after the movie was done, Buddy Holly's spirit was singing through me. Because uh, I sang all the songs. And the key, he wrote them, like A, B, G, C, F. And uh, that was automatic. Did it seem like it was your voice or your voice? I should have brought my guitar. Oh, I wish you did. Is your voice, was your voice enhanced? Did it sound different than your voice or did you feel? No. Okay. So Just me. There was a guiding energy. It was an energy that I owed. I owe that energy mm -hmm. that I utilize in everything I have, everything I do, and everything I'm becoming, just like you. Thank you. Was that your favorite movie? All of them are my favorite, but that was the peak. Mm -hmm. The nomination for the Oscar. It was Warren Beatty, Heaven Can Wait, uh, me, Bobby De Niro, Deer Hunter, Lou Ayers, the older man from England, did a movie called The Boys from Brazil, which is the Nazis went to Brazil to escape the war crimes they were guilty of. And the fifth nominee was John Voigt for coming home. John is a soul babe. All of them are. Everyone you bet that you have a dalliance with or you have a connection with is a soul babe. Mm -hmm. You've been with it a past life, and we have been together before. Mm. Did you always believe this? Were you always so spiritual as a young man, or did this come? Well, we were. We went to a Christian church every Sunday, and I was in the church youth group called Cairo, and we went to Camp Christian, which was a camp in the mountains where we stayed and learned about the Bible by reading it and interpreting it and feeling the honest persuasion of faith, love, and harmony with all things, especially you with you. Hmm. I love your story. Uh, it's a hard story to read. Uh, you, When you were in a motorcycle accident and you literally had to learn how to eat, to walk, to talk, and the uh okay let me tell you the story okay traumatic brain injury i went off a of harley davidson going 40 miles an hour and had head first into a curb without a helmet and it split my skull up here and knocked a hole in my skull oh, right, there. right there and they took bones out of my pelvis and put it there incredible that you survived it I survived it. I had angelic protection. Can you read what it said to you? It's so beautiful right here. You are in a place, the voice said, you're in a place of recovery for the responsibilities you have to mankind. It is time for you to look for help in the spiritual realm. You may come with us now or return to your body and continue your destiny. A heavenly gap of silence ensued. Then an androgynous voice continued with great love and understanding. It's your choice. It's my choice. It says you have um, a responsibility to mankind. What is it? Have you figured it out? I'm figuring it out with every breath I take hmm. because it's coming to me consistently and constantly without effort. It's just there. It's me. That's who I be. That's who I am. That's what I do. But to have the second chance at life, 
right? Twice. And then you had another incident. Twice you've had near-death experience. It's not a second chance because life never leaves you. Hmm. Life, L-I-F-E, living it forever, eternity. Yes. Die at death or earthwards. At death, D-E-A-T-H, stands for don't expect a tragedy here. <laughs> You're just moving on. Just moving on. Most people live in fear of dying, so that you must live life with a lot of freedom. Death and die are earthwards. And the word fear, F-E-A-R, that stands for false evidence appearing real. So people who are in fear create it themselves. What do you want to create now? I'm I'm doing it right now with you. This minute. Okay. We're, after. Just, hey, we're just starting. We're just starting. <laughs> after today, uh, are you interested in acting? What? Are you interested in more acting? Well, that's me. I'm a performer. Okay. So you would consider doing films? Now I'm TV. doing what in New York City next month with Corbin Benson. Okay. What is it? Can you say? It's, uh, I don't know what it's called. I just read what I'm doing. Okay. Are you excited? Huh? Are you excited? Yeah, I, I live excitedly. <laughs> okay. I'm so excited to be here with you and you. John and the spirits and angels and spiritual guides, because they're all here taking care of us. Amen. Yeah, a lot of actors listen to this podcast. And I like to think, what would my actors want to know? You've achieved so much. Well, acting is the absence of acting. It is believing in the truth of the moment you're creating at that instant without thinking. And how do you get to that space for actors that are new? How do you- Live in the venue of freedom. And- When you have freedom, everything's possible. Mm -hmm. Everything is. Everything will be, and everything will be done. That sounds like the title of a country song. I have some questions I put in the hat. I Draw one out and answer it, please. I got some <laughs> questions in a hat. Okay, some of them I already asked you, but I thought maybe you could read them and answer them. What do you think? I should let you pick it. Just had me. All right. You've lived in your body more than most people, first through sports, music, and then a near death accident with a huge amount of recovery. What is it like living in your body as Gary Busey today? It is lovely. Because I've been touched with me. I know me. I love me. And the first person you must love before you can love others is yourself. You must love yourself. No matter what you've been through, it's all part of the path you're going to with your self-evolution to be one with the one and only living one. And that's our creator. All right. Bam. Slam. Let's do another one. As a child, your mother took you to see Savage Delilah. You told her, I want to tell stories with light. That's true. I was five. What? I want to tell stories with light. What does light That's mean? That's when I got the brand from the creator for performance and give people messages of hope, love, understanding, out of confusion, out of difficulty. Do you think that's an artist's job to do that? I think an artist's job is to do what the artist chooses to do. Mm -hmm. But is there a higher calling with acting? There's a higher calling with everything you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, but actors are the ones to express. We're the ones... No, everybody does. The guy the grips, the prop people, the electricians, the sound, the camera operator and focus puller, make up the hair. We're all equal. It's, it appears to be a committee art. Imagine this, a wagon wheel. And every spoke of the wheel is an apartment on the set. Like grips, props, makeup hair, script supervisor, uh, caterers. That's some, okay. Extras. And they all go together into a hub of the wagon wheel. That hub represents the director. 
and the ball bearings at the hub are the production assistants that help the director. Mm -hmm. And the wood the spokes go into is distribution and editing. And the steel rib around the wheel is the film. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's my feeling. That's my mm -hmm. interpretation of the epitome of committee art. Speaking of directors, who's your favorite? All of them. Not one? Well, all of them. I love Daniel Adias. The way he directed me in a movie I did with Corey Haim called Silver Bullet. Dick Dotter, Lethal Weapon 1, Nick Rogue, Insignificance, which went to Cod Film Festival competition. All of them. Did you ever work with Robert Altman? No. Did you want to? Well, he wanted me in Nashville. Mm -hmm. I said that earlier. Mm -hmm. But I had a TV series, a pilot I did, sold to a network. It was called the Texas Wheelers. Jack Elam played my father. Mm -hmm. In the football movie, Bloodsport, Ben Johnson played my father. Okay, good, good. These are some, some notable people. Let's take another question. That's fun. How do you prep for acting role, especially strike time? I don't prep. I just get the script, feel the story, the meaning of the story, what my purpose is and the telling of the story, and just do it. It's easy. Playing a heroin addict, right? I went to a drug rehab place called Narco. And the guys told me what it was like on heroin. And a friend of mine who beat it with a gabbard lobby that shots in his shoulders, he said that my favorite thing to do when I took heroin was get a chair and sit in front of the icebox and stare at the refrigerator door for two and a half hours. That was my freedom, which is the opposite of freedom. It's a trap. It's a prison without bars. How about working with John Milius? Oh, John Milius had a stroke years ago, and I'd like to go see him. Big Wednesday. He wrote Big Wednesday, the surfing movie. He wrote parts of Jaws. He wrote parts of Apocalypse Now. Because mm -hmm. Spielberg would call him up and say, I need to see it about sharks eating sailors. And he pulled up the true story of the Indianapolis that was hit by a torpedo and sunk. And they were in, in a shark pool of nothing but sharks. And they were all eaten alive. <sighs> and Robert Shaw gave that speech in Jaws. John Bilius, he wrote on the back of my book. Wonderful Gary is the poet. Right there. Yeah. Wonderful Gary is the poet laureate of our time. Wow. Yay. Yeah, Big Wednesday. Huh? It's incredible that you had to learn how to. I didn't learn how to do anything. It was automatically given to me before I was born. So it really doesn't matter where you're working, whether you're on a movie set or not. Life to you is all about learning lessons. Life to me is a lesson is already learned. It's just doing it. Mm -hmm. No effort. No you, blocks. Did you enjoy making Big Wednesday? Yeah. Oh, yeah. In in the Buddy Holly story, you played at the Apollo, the world famous Apollo. What was like? What was that like for you as a performer? Uh, it was natural. It's all natural. Everywhere I am, every set I'm on, every location I'm in, it's all natural. Were you weren't nervous at all? What? Were you not nervous? No. Nervous is an obsolete word inside of Gary Busey. And I want you to make it an obsolete word inside of you. I would like that. Do it. I think it's human to be nervous, though. It, it's not stupid. It's human. part of the, it's, I think it's human. No, it's part of the treasure in learning life's freedom. Because nervous comes from being afraid to fail. And if you're afraid to fail, you're not going to win. Just know you don't fail. The word failing, failing, F-A-I-L-I-N-G, stands for finding an important lesson, inviting needed growth. That's failing.
How do you remember all your Buseyisms? I have a photographic memory. It's there's some things I don't remember though that are brought up to me, and I go, ah, you know. Mm-hmm. Where were you in your? Oh, my memory is good. It's valid. Mm-hmm. Did you go to the Academy Awards the year your name was called? Were you there? Yeah, when I was nominated. Yeah, you are required to go. Mm-hmm. Academy rules. Marlon Brando didn't. Marlon Brando didn't go. He broke the rule. No. Did you know him? Yeah, mm-hmm. I flew back with him from Tahiti to LAX. We were sitting next to each other across the aisle, and he said, "You must remember this: that life." It's just a dress rehearsal. And you must always be vulnerable because that's where your sensitivity and your feelings live. And when it's all over, you just go to sleep. You and Marlon Brando both were activists for American Indians? Well, they, yeah. So am I. Yeah. But I'm not an activist. I'm a supporter. Activist is a word to create arguments. It doesn't do anything for the worth of the statement you're making. Uh, This is uh, Navajo, mm -hmm. and it's a trinity. Three pieces of turquoise on silver means you are the truth. It means you're carrying the truth. And this is a trinity, three. Mm. And a trinity stands for Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Are you Navajo? I'm Delaware and Cherokee Ah, blood. My dad's mother was a full blood Delaware. Is that a big part of your spirituality? Yeah. Native American spirituality. Yes. (laughs) Yes, indeed. Great. In your book, you meet Chief Dan on Kung Fu, a show you worked on. Please explain his words, life is a game to play. Well, in the scene... Chief Dad George was sitting down. I took a bag of flour and poured it on his head. Then took his glasses off and broke them. And I felt so miserable. And Chief Dad George was sitting in his chair. And this beautiful Native American girl was fine-tuning his hair. And I said, Chief Dad George, I would never do this. This is not me. I have Native American blood. I apologize for the feelings it gave you by being abused. And he waited about a minute and put his hand on my thigh and rubbed it back and forth and said, don't worry, Gary. I know how to play the game. Oh, shit. (laughs) God, the game. The game of life. The game of truth. The game of love. They're not games. They're just part of you. Mm -hmm. If you choose it to be a game, you're missing the point. But I have a Incredible energy supply. What's the day in the life of Gary Busey today? It's unplanned. The planning comes from the universe of heavenly energy. Thank you for having me. Special. Thank you, Gary. That was so much fun. It's not every day that I have an Academy Award nominee in my home discussing his legendary career. So thank you. If you'd like to hear more of my podcast or read the original diaries from my column in the LA Independent, please visit www.diaryofanactress.com. Until the next time, stay inspired.